Okay, good morning. Thank you all for coming to this session. We'll be speaking mostly about map projections. I will be the first speaker, uh, introducing what is much more a user perspective on this topic. And then we'll have two other presentations that are a bit more technical and go more into the software. Okay, so my name is Luis and I work at a place called Isric. Uh, oh. Just a moment. They, re they replaced this, but didn't put the... Sorry for that, let's see. All right, okay, this is the outline of the, the presentation. Well, let's go forward. So the problem, why am I here today? As I said, I work at ISRIC, and ISRIC does, among other things, maps of soil properties for the whole world. And this is one of uh, our maps for 2017. Quite a beautiful map, but there is something wrong with it. I don't know if that's obvious. If I tell you that this map take, takes up uh, five gigabytes and took several days to compute. Does that ring any bells? There is an obvious problem with this, is that it's not an equal area projection. So this is a raster where the cells are defined by intervals of latitude and longitude. The problem with this is that these cells, they start to become really, really small as you move away from the equator. And here in this example, we have in green cells that are defined at, a, at regular intervals in an equal area projection, and in blue, cells that are defined in the previous map, in what is called the Marinos of Tira projection, a very, very old projection. And as you can see, we, the cells get smaller and smaller. In the end, you have 60% more cells in your raster in this kind of projection than if you would use an equal area projection. Why is this happening? Uh, well. Before that, just to say that this is not only ISRIC doing this, but there are many, many data sets out there that are published in this kind of projection with rasters defined uh, on cells with equal um, intervals of la longitude and latitude. And these are just a few examples. Why is this happening? I'm not really sure. I can speculate a little bit. But one of, one of the things that I know is that it's not so easy to work with equal area projections in a phosphor G stack. So yeah, let me just show you why, why, this is, why this is the case. This is New Zealand in the stereographic projection, meaning that if you were on, on board the International Space Station and you would go over New Zealand looking down, you would see something very similar to this. If you plot this with an uh, equal area projection, in this case Eckert 4, which is somewhat popular projection, you see that things start going a little bit wrong. And if we go to an even older projection like the Molvai, the, well, it, it doesn't really get better, does it? And if you go to the sinusoidal, probably the oldest equal area projection of them all, you start to see things like this, and you poor kiwis transformed into bananas. The silver lining being that now Australia is much closer, so they don't need to fly six uh, hours or so to get to Australia anymore. So yeah, th those are the kind of questions that I, were that I was confronted with. So what I did, I went to the Proch manual to look exactly what kind of projections are there, what kind of projections are available that I could work with. And in fact, Proch supports a lot, a lot of projections, far more than I was expecting. But in a phosphor G stack, it's not only project that needs to, to support these projections. You need Goodall first and foremost, because Goodall is the driver that all the other user programs use to get data in and out. So at least Goodall and Proj need to support the projection so that you can use it. All right? So I went, I went through the catalog and Proj and see what I, what I could find. One, thing, one interesting projection is the Hammer projection, which is contemporary to Eckert 4 and well, the other projections that Max Eckert defined. And actually, you can use the Hammer projection with Phosphor G. 
There are some tricks. There is this little bit WK text. You have to be aware of these little tricks. I don't have the time to explain you the details, but yeah, you can use it. And now for a little, a little intermission here. I grew up in the 1980s, so there was no internet. First time there was a phone in my home, I was seven. And back then, to get information and know about stuff, we would read books. Uh, some of you know, may know what the, what the book is, you know, with pages turning back and forth. And this book, uh, luckily for me, my parents, they were uh, subscribed to the Reader's Digest. So every so, so often we would get a new encyclopedia, you know, so a host of heavy and large books that had a lot of photos and graphs and maps. And many maps like this, in this kind of shape. For some reason, as we got into the digital age, this disappeared. So it was with great surprise that I found out that actually this particular projection, the Omolo sign, which was defined in the 1920s by a gentleman called Gude, is actually supported in, in Phosphor-G. It actually works. Awesome. So let's move a bit forward in time. Another similar projection from the 1920s, the Omorphic, developed by Mr. Bogg. And, well, things start to go wrong. So what is happening here? CS to CS, so approach tool, can pretty much deal with it, but Goodall complains. Why is Goodall complaining? Because Goodall requires any projection to be implemented both in the direct way and the inverse way. There are reasons for that. But what happens is that in the case of the homomorphic, the inverse is not implemented, and so Goodall cannot use it. So bad. And we move on throughout the 20th century to more, even more sophisticated projections, like the ones defined by Mr. Snyder, who anyone that studied cartography probably knows, a scholar of the 20th century, probably many books about cartography, and developed his own projections based on the platonic solids. Interestingly, the most popular of these projections, which is based on the cosaedron, this little figure here, is also supported in Proch. I was quite surprised. But again, we have the problem that it cannot be used by Google because the inverse is not there. So, and there are many other projections, and uh, Snyder especially defined very interesting projections throughout uh, the 20th century. Most of them are not supported. You cannot really use them in Phosphor-G. So, yeah, here I was. I found out, okay, there are a, a number of projects, not many, but there are a few that are supported. But in the end, okay, so which one should I use? Which one really is the best for my use case? So I did a, a little comparison to understand, to have an answer to this question. And I did a selection of five projections that more or less go through the history of equal area until the beginning of the 20th century. And to do this assessment, I used a construction that I call the discrete distortion indicatrix that is inspired on, on Tissot's indicatrix, but it's something much simpler, and that allows me to compute the distortions that are created by an equal area projection using Phosphor-G itself. So what is this? It's something really simple. You define a center, a center point somewhere in the surface of your ellipsoid, and then you measure one kilometer according to each of the four cardinal directions, north, east, east, south, and west. If you project something like this with a stereographic projection, you get this beautiful kind of circle with the 90 degrees, what you see in gray. But if you project it with an equal area projection, you have the penalty of distortion. You start having angles rotated, the, um, what you can see here with the red arrows, and the distances between the points in the outskirts and the point in the center start changing. So what I did was basically to position 20,000 of these things all over the globe and then measure the things what, that you see here in red. These are the results for angular distortion. In this case, we have two that perform really bad, the sinusoidal and hammer, mole vibe, so and so, and two that perform really good the Omolo sign, and Eckert 4. Okay, now uh, mapping this, so darker colors, more distortion. Sinusoidal doesn't look good at all. The mole vibe looks a little bit better. Hammer, sorry. Hammer, well, there, there is really, <laughs> it's really bad. 
and sorry, this is changing to two at this time. Hackard 4, and you start seeing, so this is a bit more sophisticated, and you see that the distortion is being compressed to the higher la latitudes, okay? And finally, the Omolosine, again, a relatively clean map with just this region in North East Russia and the Sea of Japan that gets a bit of distortion. And now to the distances distortion, what we see is more or less an inversion. So those that were performing bad in terms of angles now perform good. And those that were performing good in terms of angles perform bad in distortion. The exception being the homolocyne from Gouda. So the homolocyne was the best for angles, and it's still the best for distances. So, well, look at this uh, in the maps. This is really sensible, I'm sorry. The sinusoidal, so as you can see, the sinusoidal now, it's a much cleaner map, so the distortion in terms of, of distances is now uh, shifted to, to consigned to certain areas. The Molvide, still decent, but heavy distortions is in certain places. And the hammer, the hammer is very particular because it performed bad for angles and also performs bad for, for <laughs> distances. So, but it's a beautiful map, uh, anyway. And Eckert, and again, you see it's not as good as it was uh, for the angles, but it compresses the high distortions against to the high latitudes. And then the Yomola sign, really very clean map, distortions very well consigned. So, okay, after this comparison, it was obvious that at ISRIC we should use the, the Yomola sign projection. And this is one of our most recent results, so the next edition of our maps will be made available to the public in this, in this projection. Okay, so, well, start updating your project databases to work with our data. Um, yeah, just, did, so this projection help, help us uh, save disk space. About one less million cells per raster, so really large number in savings. And of course, we were talking of terabytes, and terabytes do not scare anyone these days, but we spare days of computation, and days of computation are expensive, all right? Okay, it's not all good. Let's go now to the bad part where I co complain about software and stuff. The first problem you have when you start using the Omolo sign is this. You load up a vector, so it always works very well with rasters, but you load up a vector in a program like QGIS and you start having th these things. The problem here is that for these programs, the codomain of any projection is infinite, which in most cases is false. So in most cases, the codomain of a projection is finite, just as the surface of the ellipsoid is finite. So to tackle this, I develop a couple of uh, vector layers that you can use to clip these weird areas, sorry, these weird areas that you get in places like Greenland. And then you get very nice vectors that exist only within the codomain of the projection. Another problem is that uh, you have to be careful the way you project to and from the Omola sign. You have to use Google Warp and know the tricks. And the tricks are in this particular uh, issue opened in the Google um, repository. And it, it works, but you cannot do a projection, for instance, with QGIS or with GRASS. It will go wrong. So you have to use Google Warp. Not a big problem, but you have to be aware of it. Well, Google and Proj, it works, but we have tools like GeoTools that do not support the Amolo sign yet. One of, the, one of the, the, the disadvantages of this is that things like Google Earth Engine then do not support the Amolo sign, and the software that Andrea develops also does not support the Amolo sign, and this is right now a major priority for us, and hopefully we'll have an implementation still this year. We'll see how, this, how that goes. Another important tool that doesn't support the Omolo sign is Proj4.js. This complicates matters in web mapping. I haven't been able to get it to work with Open Layers 5 yet. Still some research to do on that. I still have to go and see what happens with Leaflet. So all in all, you know, still an open question how you use this projection uh, in web mapping. And finally, uh, EPSG. So there's no EPSG code for the Omolo sign. It looks like there won't be one anytime soon. And some programs, they really want you to use EPSG codes. So you can use tricks, etc. But in the end, it kind of works. I can get this 
for instance, working on map server and serve tiles in the Amolo sign, it's not a problem. But one thing that bugs me is why do we depend so much on the EPSG? And I think we should, we should reflect a little bit on this. Project 6 is coming there. Maybe it can force a change, we'll see. Okay, summary. Well, it's not evident how you work with equal area projections in a phosphor G stack. Projections newer than 100 years old mostly are not supported. But we have the Omolo sign, and the Omolo sign has this advantage that minimizes both angular and distance distortions. Some, some of the projections that are supported are clearly outdated that you wouldn't use for anything because the penalty is just too, too big, like the sinusoidal and hammer. But there are other projections that are still relevant, especially the Eckert 4, but also the Molvider, which is quite, quite a nice, but it's quite nice maps. And the main conclusion is that we have to code more uh, projections. We have to code more, we have to invest on this. And I hope that this presentation uh, somehow instigates that will that drive to continue developing this. So, yeah, there are some recommendations, but I can skip this. And yeah, let's go into the questions. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Anis. Hi, for the EPSG, have you reached out to them for uh, seeing if they want to include it? And another question for the porch for do they have also a committee to decide on which projections are going in and because this is what the EPG, EPSG does. Huh? So I contacted the EPSG some months ago and I'm still waiting for an answer <laughs> regarding uh, Proj. So there was a presentation about this yesterday with Evan and Evan clearly said that he doesn't want to do that. And it's understandable, it's understandable. But the team wants to develop software, they don't want to be bugged with these kind of issues. But maybe this is not something so much to be picked up by the Proj team, but maybe by some unit at the OSG, et cetera. So maybe reach out to the EPSG people again, I would suggest. Maybe reach out to the EPSG people again, because uh, I have been in contact because we had to ex extend some specific codes there and uh, then, so they are re responsive. Try to contact them one, one more time. All right, thank you. Them and also Esri. And Esri I haven't contacted yet. And from what I know, Esri is, Esri is more approachable on that. We still have time. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, so in the project, project we don't really want to, to like govern your various uh, coordinate systems that you ca just come up with. But you can uh, define your coordinate system uh, in terms of uh, WKT or WKT2, if you want to. And Proj should be able to just digest that and turn it into whatever you want. So I don't think you actually need a specific EPSD code for this. You can just define your, your coordinate system in, in terms of the standardized way of doing it. Um, so yeah, that that's, should be possible for you. And then just another, uh, maybe a, a question. Uh, have you tried doing, like you had some examples in, in the beginning of using Proj and uh, DDL, uh, and, and the, your comment was that it doesn't work for certain projections because there's no inverse. Have you tried doing it with the newer versions of Proj and DDL? Because I think it might work in those. All right, thank you. So regarding the first comment, can you please pass that on to your map server colleagues? Because it's to them that you have to tell that. Because I already do that. I already, I, I already use the, the Proj database, and I can hook up the other software to use the projection the way I want. The problem is that programs like Map Server, they demand an EPSG code. I cannot just pass a WKT to Map Server, for instance. Find one in the EPSG file. Exactly, that's what, I, that's what I do. That's what there was in one of the uh, yeah, slides. That work in the yeah. Regarding the new versions of Proj, the, the answer is no, and, but I really want to. However, we have this policy of using uh, you know, pre-compiled packages, etc. We, we mostly depend on Ubuntu, Ubuntu GIS, and so we will only do that upgrade when either Ubuntu GIS or Debian GIS have the packages there. But I'm really looking forward to that, I can tell you. <laughs> Still time for one question or one comment, if you want. 
Andrea. Uh, one of the first slides had GeoServer depend on GDAL depending on approach, but it's not true. Ge GeoServer has its own referencing subsystem, which is the GeoTools one. You're perfectly right. Sorry. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why we cannot use the Omolo sign in, 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 in GeoServer. That's right. Uh, 